Hello everybody, my name is Lata Brouwer, you're watching Vine Lounge TV and in this episode we're going to talk about playing the violin comfortably without a shoulder rest and I've got a special guest here, Jordan Hayes, uh, president of Cradle and who recently invented the cushion for violin and that is this thingy that might be able to replace your shoulder rest. Can you share a little bit behind, um, yeah, of the idea behind the, the cushion? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I have never been able to figure out how to use a shoulder rest successfully. Uh, about, oh, I don't know, six or seven years ago, I, I got frustrated and took it off. And I found that even though it was more, it was sort of more difficult to play to have pain or nearly as much pain um, while playing when I took the shoulder rest off the instrument. And that was puzzling to me. And so, but I've, I've continued to go down that rabbit hole. And um, for, you know, I started with shoulder rests and tried many different kinds, um, but I couldn't ever figure out how to make it work. I realized that, that um, really we want a solid connection to the collarbone with the instrument. Um, so with that in mind, um, the problem uh, that you encounter when you try and play without a shoulder rest is that the, the instrument wants to slip away from you. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, it does require a bit of a change in the left hand. Um, your left hand will inevitably have to do more work. Yeah. But there are several structural advantages to playing, it, to, to establishing that connection. Because again, as we mentioned in the, the first interview about the cradle, we want to establish a direct connection to the collarbone, to the jaw, through the straight through the instrument and the chin rest right here, as close to the center line of the body as possible. If, if we do that, then the need for a shoulder rest goes way down. If you establish a nice solid connection, see, I don't really need much from a left hand once that's yeah. established. Yeah. And what that does is it completely frees the shoulder. So. The shoulder, many people mistakenly think that the shoulder contacts the back of the instrument, mm -hmm. but it almost never does that because the collarbone is much more prominent. So you'll see that the, the shoulder is allowed to kind of float much more freely. Mm -hmm. And I think that just that added bit of, of more dynamism in the, in the body prevents a lot of the pain related pl uh, pain that is, um, associated with static holding yeah. and so it seems to me and I've tried repeatedly to use shoulder rest successfully yeah. but I can't figure out a way of doing it where it doesn't immediately cause a static hold in the muscles right here yeah. and maybe you can figure that out but it but I mean this I know this is a long answer to your question but um, as we talked about previously if you use the shoulder rest to lift the instrument off the collarbone and, you, and then you move the, the, the point uh, the, the, that contacts the instrument out to the shoulder, which is the most mobile joint in the body. Yeah. It's, it's like a ball and socket joint that's super, uh, it can move in, in all sorts of directions, right? Yeah. So yeah. the only way to, to um, the only way to get the sort of fixed position that you want for the violin so that it's not moving around on you is to use muscles to lock the shoulder into a static position yeah and so because you've moved the 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 primary point of contact with the instrument out to the most mobile joint in the body you have to use muscles and the shoulder rests encourage that and so i think that if we can move to a more well the question is how can you move to a more to a collarbone based position uh, uh, contact with the instrument with the shoulder more free floating mm -hmm. while had while um, dealing with the fact that the instrument wants to slip away from you yeah. and so the cushion was my attempt at answering that conundrum um, so it's it's uh, shaped to kind of knock into the sh collarbone a little bit mm -hmm. and it has a kind of a, a high friction uh, rubbery mat feeling material to to again to prevent try and help prevent the instrument from slipping away. Um, so that's that's sort of the thinking there, that we want to establish yeah. that direct straight line connection with the collarbone. Yeah, and just to, because I know that the shoulder rest and without shoulder rest discussion can be very heated. 
Um, yeah. what, what a lot of people say is that uh, when you don't have a shoulder rest, you can't do position play, you can't do vibrato. While, yeah, if you look at the history, uh, in the yeah in the centuries of violin playing before the shoulder rest, it's actually quite recent. People were doing vibrato and playing Paganini for many decades um, before the shoulder rest was even invented. And yes. uh, also the soloists from... Uh, like David Oistrag or Milstein, they played for, yeah, until a very late age without, um, well, maybe not without injury, but they were able to play on a very high level until a very late age. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I can speak from personal experience. It takes, uh, it's definitely a transition. Uh, so it's, and it's, um, I think though that, uh, if you can find something that does the trick, like I used to use a um, one of those chamois cloths. It's like mm -hmm. for waxing cars, but it's like the the, yeah. the really soft leather. I yeah. used to use that there, and that kind of helped a little bit. And so people can run to the hardware store and get one of those and see how it feels. Yeah. But I think that, um, and I would never say that I'm not a, a no shoulder rest, you know, uh, evangelist or anything necessarily. Mm -hmm. I think that shoulder rests cause a lot more problems typically than they solve because they're typically used to lift the instrument up to the jaw and that has a cascading uh, effect all the way down the line that years down the road maybe will lead to, to problems. But but if you need a shoulder rest, go ahead and use one. The thing is, is I think that we have to re rethink how what we think that they're good at doing. Mm -hmm. And I would say that so long as you establish a nice primary connection of fullness right here and then you add a shoulder rest back in you'll notice that it doesn't really need to do a whole lot all it's yeah. doing is is just again that difference so it doesn't yeah. really need to do a whole lot yeah. um and i think that's also something that's been taught in the last couple of decades um that the the, the violin has to kind of magically float and that you need to be able to release your uh, arm. While the, uh, it's, it's been proved even that if you balance your violin between your collarbone and your left hand, that your intonation can even improve because you, you have more contact with your, um, with your left hand all the time. Yeah, well, it's, 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 with the shoulder rest, it's, the arm is free floating, but the shoulder yeah. is locked. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's not it's a it's an illusion of freedom, I think. Yeah, yeah. But it's also an illusion that keeps uh, people searching, because they can't find that uh, comfortable uh, setup uh, yeah. where they can move their arm freely and their shoulder. It's it's just not possible. And but people are looking for it. Uh, I see this in my violin shop all the time that they want me to fit them a chin rest and shoulder rest so they can move everything freely. Yeah. Uh, While well, you must hold the instrument in some way, uh, in all cases, you're dealing with gravity, which is most of the times. So, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, and the thing is, is that w without a shoulder rest on, it you'll still likely find that you'll kind of squeeze up maybe here and there, or you'll, mm -hmm. you'll still get tense. The thing is, is that um, just by the nature of where the structure is, is being placed on the body, there's just ever so slightly more more softness in the muscles mm -hmm. and it seems to be just that 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 tiny little bit of extra softness and subtle motion that's allowed when you don't have a shoulder rest uh, does wonders for the the pain that comes from the really fixed and static positions that shoulder rests yeah. tend to push us towards yeah yeah because your body is meant to move and not to um, be held in one yes asymmetric uh, way. Um, maybe it's interesting for the viewers if I'm going to show them how to uh, put the cushion on their violin uh, and how it, uh, how it works. So you have to remove your chin rest for this. And it'll work with any chin rest with the normal, uh, like the, the bracket that goes across or the hill style ones. Okay. I don't think it works with the Whitner chin rests, though, because you need access to from the bottom for those. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah if I think with most chin rests, yeah, just not the 
um, plastic Whitner uh, chimneys, yeah. perhaps. Yeah. We, so, but I just mentioned that because we do get questions like, oh, do you have to use this with the cradle? And you, you absolutely don't have to use the cushion with the cradle. You can use it yeah. with your normal chimneys if you want. Okay. Yeah, that's that's very good to know. Um, and then um, we move actually the the chin rest into the cushion. And how do you determine how to place it in this direction? Experimentation, really. Whatever feels best. Yeah. Okay. It, it has it has everything to do with the relationship between like where you're holding the instrument, mm -hmm. your collarbone shape and type, and the relationship to your jaw. It's all interdependent. It just takes some time to figure out, oh, this feels best or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. In this case, there's really no no magic. <laughs> okay, no magic yeah. uh, trick. Um, so now I fitted the cushion to the violin. So you can do that with uh, every chin rest that has these kind of brackets or a little bit different kind of brackets. Um, so what would be your first tips to uh, playing without shoulder rest with the, the cushion? So you want to really put it on your uh, collarbone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, if you're a cradle user, you'll probably find that you have to go one post size lower mm -hmm. or it around there because you're adding a little bit of height from underneath. Um, and then really you're just looking for it to, you can move it you know, up and down the edge of the instrument so that um, you can figure out where it feels best on your collarbone. And then, um, it's also important when you play without a shoulder rest, and I think this is one of the one of the main things that uh, makes people really uncomfortable when they try and play without a shoulder rest, yeah. particularly if they're if they they're used to playing with one, is that what a shoulder rest does is because it's such a static fixing device, it allows you to collapse the sternum forward, mm -hmm. and the violin will still stay where it's at. But if yeah. I do that without a shoulder rest, the instrument really wants to fall away. Okay. So one of the best ways and one of the first things you should do and i think also one of the main reasons that playing without a shoulder rest often leads to less pain is that it requires that you keep a proud sternum okay so it requires yeah. that you you keep this elevated and what that creates is a bit of shelf and then the instrument won't want to fall away from you nearly as much and so okay. you want to you want to again you sort of have to start with the body just like in the with the cradle mm -hmm. you, you want to start with that sort of we'll call it dynamic poise so you have like sort of like if you think of a ballet dancer they're always very very poised right here and that's a that's a, the position that the body likes to be in best it, yeah. it's where the skeleton and muscles all kind of work together the most efficiently so if we establish that position you'll find that the need for shoulder rest will go way down okay um so you want that kind of shelf and then to figure out you can move the cushion accordingly mm -hmm. and then also um you know Try your, your your chin rest options accordingly. Yeah. I would do that without a shoulder rest on. And then if you if once you've if you've established a solid feeling of fullness right here, then and you you want your shoulder rest back, you can try adding it back in and, and adjusting it accordingly if you want, mm -hmm. I suppose. Um, but you want to try and retain that feeling of fullness right here. Yeah. So if at some point the shoulder rest starts clouding that that sensation. Mm -hmm. Then you might try and uh, change something and, and, and see if you can reestablish that connection. Okay. Yeah. And I, what you said is that it's important to um, not pull up your shoulder and hold your violin in that way. Yeah, the shoulder should never contact the instrument. Okay. I mean, I can yeah. barely. I I don't think I can even really touch. I mean, uh, that's touching, but yeah. I really have to try. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, there should be there should be room between the shoulder and the back of the instrument. Okay. It's really fascinating because the contact when you play without a shoulder rest, even without the cushion, the the reason the cushion is this size is because mm -hmm. the contact patch with the collarbone is something like around this size. Yeah. Yeah, it's just um, this little knot. It's just a very little contact. Yeah. So uh, even with players who don't play with a shoulder rest, there's really no contact with the with the edge with the instrument itself. Yeah. 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 So and that's maybe something that that if you are used to playing with the shoulder rest you have to get used to that that you don't pull up your shoulder to feel a stability or something. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to want to look for it in the collarbone and there's just no way I I don't think there's any way around the left hand having to do a little bit more work. Yeah. Yeah. But then still that's more flexible yeah kind of work. I mean if you 
Yes. If you use your muscles, then that's something else than locking a shoulder or something, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's it's uh, <laughs> I don't exactly. It, it works, uh, but it can take take some time. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not something, and I think also you have to get used to uh, because I tried it out for for a couple of days. Um, that you have to get used to the feeling of the something that's not really hard, but yeah, it's it's not soft. It's not not uh, foam like yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah, it's not foam like. It's kind of more firm than that. I mean, part of the reason is that that was done on purpose to some degree because um, because the more compressible kind of foam stuff it yep. causes a it destabilizes the connection a bit so yep. there's a there's a there's a cost benefit analysis that you have to do in terms of like how much squishiness you have which imparts more uh, destabilization into the system mm -hmm. so you, you you don't like the idea behind this is partly to add friction but also partly to just ever so slightly soften the edge because yep. The instrument, one of the most common complaints when you ask people to play without a shoulder rest is that the instrument is hard. Yeah. And the thing is, is that uh, even with the cushion, you'll likely be sore. The collarbone will likely be sore for a couple of weeks. Yeah. It's kind of like um, when you buy a new bike seat, typically your uh, rear end will hurt for a few weeks. And the, you know, like when I, when I got a bike, the, the people at the bike shop were just like, yeah, you just you got to give it some time because it's actually a yeah. really comfortable seat once you get used to it yeah. and your body will get used to it. And that's why people do and can play with nothing yeah. and be okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. it's doable. It's just uh, kind of have to give it some time. Yeah. You need to spend the uh, effort and time to also yeah. learn to play in that, uh, in that way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks uh, so much. I think uh, there's a lot of valuable information in this uh, this interview. Do you have anything else to share about uh, the cushion? I don't think so. I think that's that's pretty good. Alrighty. In the um, description below, I'll also link also link to our uh, interview about the cradle chin rest that you can adjust in various ways, and I'll link to your website uh, if people are interested in buying the cushion. Um, well, thank you so much for being here. And yeah, thank I really you. enjoyed the chat and there is uh, some very interesting feed of thought, I think, for players um, to be in their journey to play uh, comfortably. So thank you very much for that. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Violin Lounge TV. I publish a new video every Wednesday and they're mostly violin lessons. If you don't want to miss them, then hit subscribe and turn on notifications. I hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye bye!